Are you solo? Do you need an unraidable base? Then welcome to your new home, the Temple V2. This is an insanely strong base for its very low cost. The footprint is tiny, so it can be built anywhere, but there is more than enough loot space for a solo. The core unit sports three bunkers embedded into the honeycomb, separated so as to be unsplashable. Different to the original temple, which relied on wall stacking for the bunkers, here the core unit is self-contained, so you can add as many externals as space allows, making it perfect for villages. In fact, here it is in the current wipe. This is our village, and this is my temple. I've also incorporated an anti-TC griefing mechanism. If anyone griefs one of your external TCs, you can take it back instantly by doing this. Pretty sweet when it actually comes up. And the interior design is pretty straightforward. This top floor locker is where I keep the best kits. Here there's a quick drop-off loot room next to the airlock. Lots of garage doors. The door path to the core is the equivalent of 41 rockets worth of boom for anyone trying to door raid. And that's without the outside bunkers. So yeah, simple, cheap and strong. Everything is solo needs. The Temple V2. Let's build it, shall we? It begins with a hexagon of triangle foundations, two of which will be armored, with a TC compartment here. Close this off with walls, all armored but for the last one, which can remain sheet metal. When closing the top, build from the outside in, like this, so as to avoid the triangle splash bug. This is critical to the build. But leave an opening here, where three furnaces will serve as a jump up. And the second floor is to be closed in like so. Just make sure not to wall this yet, as for this stage of the build, this is the entrance. And of course it'll look like this at first, but you get it. Back inside, add a double shelf next to the TC, and gradually fill the whole core with garage doors. Next comes a layer of honeycomb all around the core. And when you're ready, close this opening, add a sheet metal and a stone shelf behind it, and up we go to the third floor. First, of course, there has to be a chute exit. Extend the door path with another garage door. And then a single door part of an airlock that is soon to come. Now I like to continue with the quick drop-off loot room, where you'll need to place the shelves from the outside in, like so, due to the triangle splash bag. And close. Lastly, for this stage, set a ladder hatch between the single doors, or a ladder if you don't have the hatch yet. And a standard roof exit on top completes this starter unit. And again, it'll look like this at first, but you get it. And even at this stage, there are a couple of important improvements over the first temple. Originally, the TC was behind a window, but here a door is straight up better. You don't need a window blueprint, it allows you to upgrade the TC compartment at any stage of the build, which a window frame will prevent. The TC is easier to access or replace. And there's more shelf room. So that's one small improvement. Also, originally there was a shelf jump up here. 
Furnaces just make more sense. They serve the same purpose, and they're not littering your hallways. So mobility is a bit better. Which reminds me, if you want to have an easy time navigating bases like this, always set physics steps to 60. It'll make all these little jumps effortless. Alright, to be fair, minor improvements in this stage of the build, which is basically the starter unit. But all the big and important improvements, well, let's get to them, shall we? Alright, so before anything else, we want to complete the fourth floor and the roof. And if the wipe is going well, I'll probably upgrade this floor too. A protected locker and bed for quick respawn and rekit is something no Rust player should live without. And the roof itself is gonna be the simplest setup known to man. And I do enjoy having a flame trap or a turret up here, you know, to deter any would-be Kothi Rajas. Now it is possible to have a much more elaborate shooting floor, but that's a story for a different time. And now we prepare for the bunkers. Starting here, although it doesn't really matter where, add a metal foundation to the right, a wall, and ceilings placed specifically like this. Again, avoiding the triangle splash bug. Then go left, add two foundations, embed a stone wall for splash separation, and close. From here continue going left, alternating between bunker compartment and solid honeycomb. When closing the top, again make sure to orient the triangles correctly, building from the outside in. One way to tell it's good is this stony texture on the top right. Next we honeycomb the second floor by first adding six stone splash separators, sheet metal also good if you can afford it, and triangle roofs all around. Good, good. Time to complete the core with the free-handed roof bunkers that will save your wipe guaranteed. First, place a twig triangle here, from which you'll build a shelf inside the bunker. Add a frame inside and a triangle frame here, not upgrading anything just yet. Move here and try to place a square in such a way where it connects to the base on this side but with a tiny, tiny gap here. Also try to align height with this twig foundation. Your new foundation should be just a tiny bit lower. Now place a wall and check the following, redoing this step if necessary. Stability must be 78 or 79% and the gap on this side should be fairly small. Lastly, you must be able to replace this foundation with triangles by doing this. If everything checks out, congrats! You've just successfully freehanded. Give the bunker a quick test, upgrade the frames, rotating this one, add a garage door, and finally upgrade the outside bits. Good, good. The two side triangles aren't necessary for the functioning of the bunker, by the way, and the wall doesn't even need a foundation for stability, but they're necessary for rebuilding in case the central one gets soft-sided. Oh, and it might be that your bunker won't open this way, but rather this way. This is actually better, but harder to accomplish. 
either way is fine. And for the last touch, get three siren lights and place them in these positions. This will allow you to safely exit the base in any direction, because, you know, door campers. Now, in comparison to the original temple, the bunkers of that first version relied on wall stacking, which has a few issues. Firstly, it requires that you gather all the materials needed for three external TCs just to close your main base. And the more serious problem is that in wall stacked roof bunkers, you either have a gap here that allows rockets through, or you close that gap with a frame. But if you do this and the bunker wall gets c forward with this triangle frame remaining, you cannot close it back up. With the new freehand method, you can always rebuild. And for me, this improvement alone warrants a whole new version of the base. Of course, I also added splash blockers, a fourth floor that was made possible by lowering the overall cost of the base, but you know. So that's it, the core of the base is complete. The only thing left to add is the highly optimized compound and the TC imploder anti-griefing mechanism. Alright, compound time. And it goes like this. Place these frames right away, trust me on this. And finally, a disconnectable Satori type TC compartment. Set a metal wall here with a triangle shelf inside. This is for the turrets, of course. Also, don't forget to connect the TC back so nothing decays. Should you ever need to replace your main TC, disconnect this like so. Replace main TC and reconnect. As a budget-oriented solo, I'll usually close it like this and use large external gates. But if I do want a gatehouse, I'll replace the wall with a frame and do this. And about those gatehouses. Door controllers, smart switch, the Rust Plus app. Complete area domination. So that's the compound, or this, whatever, you do you. Anyway, frames such as these are often used to extend external DC protection vertically, but they can be a grub hazard before the turrets are placed. So here's what you can do. And for the final trick, if one of your external TCs ever gets taken over, griefed, fear not, just do this. It works since adding a frame here connects these two separate structures into one. And as one structure cannot have two TCs, the older TC will remain while the new one implodes. Also, since all of this is now connected to your main TC, it does not decay and building privilege is extended from it so that nobody but you can build in the area. You can now safely replace it. How cool is that? There is one caveat, however, which is unavoidable. So long as someone just griefs your externals, the mechanism is perfect. But if your main TC gets destroyed, you will need to replace the external TCs to reset the mechanism, as it's always the oldest TC that destroys the newer ones. And if you say, okay, so why have disconnectable TCs in the first place? Let's say you get raided and the main TC is broken. The first priority is to replace it, to save the base. So for that you use the disconnection mechanism. After that, with the situation secured, you can, at leisure, replace the externals one by one, thus resetting the TC imploder mechanism. See? And that, my friends, is the base done. The Temple V2, my go-to solo base. Absurdly powerful for its extremely affordable upkeep, multiple bunkers keeping loot safe and spread out, allowing for an easy restart in case you get raided, a comfortable and cheap compound with all sorts of shenanigans, and I'm absolutely certain it'll take you safely through the wipe. If you liked this, leave a like. Also, tell me your thoughts in the comments. And for more building tutorials and many, many Rust building tips and tricks, 
check out the rest of my videos. Hope to see you again soon. And until then, goodbye for now, and blessed be.